In this video, we're going to look at the formula for compound interest. And I don't want to just give you the formula and have you plug numbers in. I want you to really understand where the formula comes from, what all the variables stand for, and why they are the way they are. So let's motivate this with a problem. We've got $1,000. We're going to deposit in an account that pays 5% APR compounded monthly. Find the amount in the account after one month, two months, three months, etc. So a couple things to really focus on here is this APR, annual percentage rate. This 5% would be how much you would get in a year. But in this problem, we're compounding monthly. We're going to give you interest every month. Well, you're not going to get 5% every month. If you're getting 5% a year, you're only going to get 1 12th of that per month. All right. So if 5% is the APR, 5% divided by 12 would be your monthly percentage rate. If it was giving it to you every quarter of a year, it'd be 5% divided by 4 would be how much you would get every quarter of a year. All right, so let's go through this here. Let's say um, we're looking at our months, and we're going to see what happens here in month number one. So we're starting with $1,000, all right? So what's happening in month number one? Well, we're growing our money by a certain percentage. So we're going to get our money back. We're going to get all of our money back. That's 1 times 1,000, plus we're going to get a little bit more. We're going to get 5% divided by 12. Okay, that's how much money we're going to have. Like if you increase something by 5%, you'd have 105%. If you increase it by 20%, you'd have 120%. So this number right here, whatever 1 12th of 5% is, and we can punch that into our calculator, we would add that to 1 and multiply it by 1,000 to figure out how much we'd have in our account at the end of the month. So the 1 is going to give us the total in the account, not just the interest. All right, so if we punch this out into our calculator, um, just, a, just a word of caution here. I'll do it on this first one. If you do this first part in the parentheses, let's see, and you punch in, oh, I think I have a calculator. Let's show you what I mean here. Do I have a calculator? There you are. And we'll punch in 1 plus 0.05 divided by 12. Okay, we have a lot of decimals here. What you don't want to do is round this, all right? You want to keep all these decimals. So instead of writing this number down, rounding it, and then multiplying by 1,000, just do the entire computation and multiply by 1,000, and then write your number down, all right? So if we round this to the nearest penny, we've got $1,004. Now we're going to round it, all right, to the nearest penny, and 17 cents, $1,004.17. 1,000. Okay, so that's our balance after year uh, month number one. So now let's go to month number two. Let's get rid of this stuff here. We don't need that. So for month number two, we're going to do the same kind of deal, except now we don't have $1,000. We've got um, 100, sorry, $1,004.17. And we're going to multiply that by the same thing, right? We're going to increase the value of our account again by this same percentage. So let's punch this into our calculator. I'm going to go ahead and round this. You can get off by a penny if you don't round your last computation when you're doing your calculating. Um, times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12. Close parentheses. Now when I close the parentheses on this calculator, I get the value of what's inside the parentheses. Then I still have to hit equals to get the um, actual entire computation of $1,008.35. All right. Now, if we think about how we got $1,008.35 starting with the $1,000, well, we took this number right here, right? This $1,004.17. Where did that come from? Remember, that number right there came from doing 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12. And then to get the next month, we multiplied by 1, point, 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 again. So what we were really doing was taking 1,000 and multiplying 1 point, 
1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 to the second power. Let's try that. Let's do that on our calculator and see what happens over here. All right, so if I did uh, 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12 equals, and that's in the parentheses. Then I take that to the second power. So in this calculator, I'm going to use the squared button and then multiply that by 1,000. I get $1,008.35. All right. I actually went directly to the computation. I didn't use, I didn't even punch in the $1,004.17. All right. Let's go to month number three. So what are we going to do in month number three? Well, we're going to take our balance from last month, which was $1,000. $8.35 and we're going to increase it again so we're going to multiply by this multiplier one more time and let's see what we would get so if I do 1008.35 times the quantity 1 plus 0.05 divided by 12 close the parentheses equal I get $1,012.55 now, let's think about what we really did from the beginning. Where did this number come from? Well, remember it was it was all this. So if we think about we started with our $1,000 and we multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 squared to get the second month, then we multiply that by that factor again. Are you starting to see the pattern? I hope you are. This number right here could be found by taking... 1,000 times this multiplier to the third power, and we don't even have to find the previous months to do that. All right, so now let's say I want to figure out, you know, how much is in the account after a year. Can you see what you would do? Instead of having to go through month four, month five, month six, month seven, let's cut to a year. I'm kind of out of room, but we'll put it over here. All right, so after one year, how much will we have? Well, we're going to do this 12 times, right? We would take our $1,000 and we would end up multiplying by this number divided by 12, 12 times for a year. If we wanted two years, we'd do this 24 times. If we wanted three years, we'd do it 36 times. So now I could take my calculator and I can figure out how much I have in my account um, without having to figure out every single month, I can figure out how much I'll have after a year. Now on a calculator like this, what I would do is sort of do the order of operations as I go along here. I wouldn't necessarily try to do this all at once, although it'll probably be fine. I get a little worried when my calculator's less sophisticated. Um, oops, I want that to be a divide. Divided by, did it go back? I'll no, start over. 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12. All right, so there's the part in the parentheses. Now I'm going to take that to the 12th power equals, and then I'm going to multiply that by 1,000. So I have $1,051.16. $1,051.16. So I could figure out how much I have in a year without having to go through every single month. Now, I really want to highlight here the difference between compound interest and simple interest. If I was doing simple interest, I would just take my 1,000 for a year, simple interest for a year, and just increase it by 5%. And 5% of $1,000 is $50. So I would end up with, and you could punch that into your calculator to make sure you believe me, $1,050, right? 5%, 10% of 1,000 is 100, so 5% would be 50. So I made an extra buck 16 here on my $1,000 through the power of compounding. That's what the compound interest does. Now, let's see if we can generalize this into a formula so we can solve whatever kind of problems we want to solve. So I've assigned some variables over here, and different books, different websites are going to have different letters as long as you know what the letters mean like instead of future value a lot of people use a for amount and they use n for number of compoundings per year but it, I'm just using these letters as long as you know what the letters mean you should be able to figure it out all right so let's write down let's I'm going to transfer what we did right here okay to the other slide so we can look at it another page 
So remember, the way we found out the amount in the account after a year, which is the future value of this account after a year in the future, we did this. Now let's see if we can generalize what we've got going on here. And we had a, we had a 12 here. All right, so the 1,000, what was that? Well, the 1,000, that was the present value. Actually, let me go back and I'll make this. I'll get all color coordinated. That'll be fancy. So the future value equals the present value. That's the $1,000 that we had times. Now, what was the one there for? Remember, the one was there because we have the initial investment, the present value, however much we had in there. We get that back. So that's going to stay a one no matter what the investment is. Plus, what was the 5%? You remember, that was the APR, so that's my R. And why did we divide by 12? Well, we divided by 12 because it was compounded monthly. So that's the number of compoundings per year. And we'll go through a couple of those, a couple more of the common ones here in a second. And then, what was this 12? Well, that was the total number of compoundings. Remember, if we were doing for... Uh, for three months, the total number of compoundings was three. If we were doing this for two months, the total number of compoundings was two. So however many compoundings there are, we want to take it to that power, the total number of compoundings. So as far as the compoundings per year, a couple other ones that might come up. If, if it's uh, daily, if it's compounded daily, then you're going to use 365 for C. Um, usually you don't see weekly. I guess it could be. I mean, it's compounded weekly. Then the value of C would be 52, and we did monthly. Quarterly is four times a year. Semi-annually is two times a year. So you would use two. You would divide the APR by two if you're doing it twice a year. And then, of course, annually would be yearly. All right, so this is the formula for compound interest. I want you to understand why it works, where it comes from, and really see that what's happening here is exponential growth. So if we just look at a general exponential growth formula, it's y equals a times b to the x. And the a value in exponential growth represents the initial value of whatever it is that's growing. Well, that's the same thing as the present value of our account. The B represents the growth factor. How much is it increasing by? How much is it growing by? A hundred and something percent? Well, that's all this business right here. That tells us how much it's growing by. And then the number of compoundings is just the number of times you're multiplying by B. So all you have here with the compound interest formula is exponential growth. And if you can remember that, it'll really help you remember the formula and why you have to divide by the number of compoundings and things like that. All right, well, let's end with one example, just using the formula. Show how easy it is. $5,000 is deposited in an account that pays 6.7% annual percentage rate compounded quarterly. Find the amount in the account after five years. All right, so let's write the formula down we had. We had future value equals present value times 1 plus the interest rate divided by the number of compoundings per year taken to the power of the total number of compoundings. All right, and you can refer back, rewind the video, or refer back to this if you need to. So it might be a good idea to pause the video here and see if you can get the right answer and then start it again and see, see what you got. All right, so what you should have done here is taken your present value of $5,000 and multiplied that by 1 plus the interest rate is 0 0.067 divided by, since it's compounded quarterly, we're going to divide by 4. And then the total number of compoundings, well, let's think about this now, total number of compoundings. We're going to do this for five years, but we're doing it quarterly. So we're going to give somebody interest four times a year for five years. So the total number of times that we're going to give them interest is 20 times. If we were doing this by hand, we'd have to do this business we were doing here 20 times in order to get to the end of five years. 
one quarter, two quarter, three quarter, four quarters is a year. Then five, six, seven, eight for two years. This is this would be what we would end up doing, right? So this is the shortcut to get to that value after five years without having to calculate every single quarter. All right, let's do this out and see what we get. Let's see. So I'm going to do 1 plus 0 0.067 divided by 4. That's my B value. If I'm thinking of this as exponential growth, this is my growth factor. I'm going to take that to the 20th power. And then I'm going to multiply that by 5,000. Now, before I multiply by 1,000, see this 1.39? That's how much your money's going to increase by, like 139% from your initial starting value. So we have, what do we got? 6,970 and 33 cents. 69. See, remembering what was on the calculator is the hardest part for me. There we go. So we have $6,970.33. If we were asked the total interest earned over these five years, well, we know that um, we only invested $5,000. So if we subtract that off, how much money we have now, anything over and above $5,000 is interest. All right, well, I hope that helped you understand the compound interest formula. And again, you know, you're going to be plugging numbers in and chugging out stuff. So really take a moment to reflect on what the compound interest is that it's just exponential growth like this deal right here and what the initial value is and what the growth factor is and how you have to take the annual percentage rate and divide by the number of compound compoundings in order to calculate that growth rate all right hope that helped